Hello. So today I'm going to explain to you how to grind in Soccer Spirit. I know a lot of you have seen guides on the internet and what I'm going to say is going to be very similar if not the same things you're going to read. But I'm going to do it by showing it to you. Something that a lot of people are not going to be able to understand when reading it is what everything means. As I know it can be very overwhelming and sometimes extremely unclear what the guide is saying. A lot of people have asked me questions. This is why I've decided to make this video. So as you will see in the top bar, in the game, there are on average five kinds of resources. There's match boss points, there's GP, gold, crystal, and dimension stones. So let's start from the easiest to the hardest. Gold is very simple. To do a bunch of small operations, selling, over the game, you're going to just need gold. It's something you're always going to need at the end of every match or basically every match. It's certain special matches don't have it. You're going to end up with gold. So it's something that along the game you're going to get, but at some points you're going to need to grind it to do certain special things, some training, and equip your in, improve your equipment that in these games are called Spirit Stones. The second resource is GP. Uh, this is a resource you're going to get from selling 3-star rebuff cards, or you can get in different locations. I'm going to explain later on how to grind it, but its one use is in something called the Scout, that you can access just by clicking on it, where here you can buy any card you see by, pay by paying the amount of GP. Uh, the highest price you will ever see is 1800 and that's for a manager. Uh, on average, you're going to try get stay around 1600 to uh, to 2000 just like this in case you see a card you really want it you can just leave with it so after looking at guides and understanding the players you're going to want to be able to just buy the card when it finally appears cuz let's just say getting five cards in the five star cards in this game is actually very hard the third resource is going to be crystals so this is what we're going to consider a premium currency something that you're usually not waiting to get well in this game, to be honest, they're pretty generous. There's a bunch of packs you can get, but if you want to pay and support the devs, I'm going to advise only paying for a single one of them. And it's the one that's right here. You can see I had to renew it. It's for the month. Uh, every day for a month, you're going to get 20 crystals. Uh, it's extremely cheap. Depending on the currency, it might be a little bit more expensive. Uh, I mean, from what I understood, in the US, it costs $7. In Canada, it's around 11 And basically, I, I consider it a subscription to the game. It, it allows to help the devs. And compared to a price ratio to the amount of crystals and resources you get from it, it's really great. But if you don't want to pay, there is a way because the game's generous. There is a daily achievement. So you will want to complete it every single day and be careful to always do it. I haven't gotten it yet, but if I spend five minutes, I'll be able to. They're very easy to make. In two connections, max, you're going to be able to get them all. If, for example, you need to do 10 matches in story mode, it costs 20 strength. At the beginning of the game, you can already spend that in around, let's say, five minutes of gameplay and leave with those five crystals. But what's really nice is there is a bunch of consecutive achievements who are going to give you a lot of crystals. Well, my numbers are higher than what you're going to see at the beginning of the game, but mine are harder to get. So there's going to be grades of achievements. For example, you see here, Galaxy Conquest 3, meaning there was 1 and 2. So again, more you go late game, the longer it's going to take for you to get them, but when you're going to get them, it's going to be much more rewarding. And this is a currency you're going to spend when you want to buy skins, when you want to do special draws, when you want to spend on stuff, there's the buy gold, buy, buy basically any resource in the game except GP. And well, Dimension Stone is something even more premium. Then we have the boss points. You will see in the top left corner. Uh, very often, you're going to have something called a boss match or um, a minion match. So the boss match is only going to be on the weekend and the minion match is going to be for five days during the week. So it's usually going to be on different tiers, uh, and when you win the match, you will only be able to get one of the four minions. So there's always one three star and three four stars. Uh, one's going to give on average 10,000 gold, one 10 to 20 GP, one's going to be experience, and the last one's going to be something tiny, who's the three star. But what's interesting is every time you complete it, you're going to get some points. If you lose, you get less, but ideally you're going to take a difficulty you can master. 
So as you see on top left, it's I, I have only 21 points. That's because I've already collected everything I cared about. Uh, I wanted the Swirly, the Belzebub, the Four Star Penguins, and I've already purchased one time the player. You can purchase them up to three times, or on the weekend match, there's a chance that it will drop. But the weekend match is extremely hard, and for a lot of new players, it is not an option. And there are event scouts, but that is an entirely different story, and that is just based on the fact that you spend strength doing any kind of match whatsoever. And then we have Dimension Stones on the top right. It's very simple. You do not spend them ever. And I'm not, I'm not saying this to be the, the complaining old person. It's just to say, everything you can buy spending them is never going to be as interesting as the last deal. The one right here. You, if you are able to save up 900 of them, you can choose a legendary card of your choice. You're going to say it's interesting, yeah. But when you, you start advancing and you understand how powerful they are, it's extremely interesting. Sadly, you can get Season 2 Legendaries, but to be honest, except for maybe one of them, they're all extremely strong, and as you'll see your team formation advance, your question is going to be which one's the best, and you're going to be able to find that pretty clear. For example, uh, William and Leviator are some great shooters. Uh, Balteon is the only Legendary passer, in my eyes, one of the strongest in the game, as... From what I've seen, he can do up to 3,000 pass effect, who's extremely powerful, knowing some of them are going to be in the hundreds. So saving these points for these players is much more rewarding. Now, you're not going to get a lot of them. They're only going to fall doing other tasks, so grinding for them is not even something you're going to be looking at until you really advance in the game. Don't even start grinding until you hit 6 700 because grinding them by itself is only doable by one method. It's completing chains, but until you've had a lot of cards, it's meaningless, and you'll be getting one, two dimensions, so then you're going to get extremely frustrated. I have a low amount because I've actually just purchased a legendary a while back. You can also get some bonus ones if you make a paid purchase, except for the daily pack, as it's very cheap and is already a good bargain. So now... What you want to do is, for the gold, is look at the matches. Two things are important. On the weekend, we have what we call the gold match. It's extremely good to spend some, some strength. The level of the match is actually not important. You want to, of course, try to do the highest one because they're going to yield better rewards. But if you look at the base cost for the amount of gold you're going to get, it's very good. If it costs 6 strength, you're getting around 3,000. 8 strength, 4,000, 10 strength, 5,000. So basically one strength, 500 gold. It's an approximate amount, but it's it's not a, a bad deal. If you're weak, to just do the, weak, the the smallest one, the normal difficulty, a lot of people can pull that off. Well, the hell one is even at my level can sometimes be a little bit challenging when I mix up a few players. So you want to usually try go for the lowest one. But if you're able to go further, I mean, you're going to get a better amount of swirlies, so something you're going to want to farm later on, as they're going to help you evolve player, and they're also going to allow you to, to give them some bonus stat points. But that's going to cost you gold again. So sometimes you're going to start the weekend grinding gold, and you're going to leave the weekend with less gold than you began by doing these matches. Ironically, your team's going to be stronger, but that's just a detail. And you're going to have what we're going to call flash gold matches they're going to be happening for only one hour there are none on the weekend if you go to the bottom of the schedule they're the very last match and the gold match is the special one yields more gold around 10 to 20 percent uh, last time i did one i think i got around uh, 6400 gold while when i do the weekend one for the exact same match I get 5,400, so it's around 1,000. I'm, I'm saying this approximately. So it's even better if you can do those, but if you can't, you want to do the weekend ones. And there's a lot of different matches. Uh, very often, you're going to have a daily match who's going to be a weekday gold limited match. Always do those. You can only do it three times, but it's a great bargain for the amount of strength it's going to cost you. And there's no better match for gold, except the Sunday special gold match that happens only three times but that's the best deal of gold you're ever going to get so again just as you can see uh, they're flashing green that means we can use them and you see again my gold going up um for these two managers 
they really shine when you rank up over a certain level because they're based on the amount of friends you have. No, you do not need real friends in real life for this. It's not important. Whenever you play a match, unless you have maxed out friends, it's going to propose you to use units who belong to people who are not in your friend list. If you do that, at the end of the match, you can press add. So not having 100 friends playing this game makes no difference. And currently it's capped at 30. If they ever increase that amount, I'm going to make more money. I'm not going to complain. And sometimes when you grind, it can be frustrating to not have enough friend slots. Because in certain conditions, you want some friends who have certain types of aces, and it doesn't always work out. So you got to call your friend up, tell him, please switch your ace, or message him online, who's very popular with this game. Here, again, as I said, his ability is to use the ability of my equip trainer. And as we're going to see him, it's going to give me 30 strength, and this is the equip trainer's ability. So he is very good for grinding. He is considered the best scout grinder. Um, if you don't need stones anymore and you want to get rid of Marineko or just for the grinding on a certain point in time, after using her, you can switch her back out for uh, Sigmund. He allows your max strength to go up all the way up to 20 when he's maxed out completely. He'll equip the skill of your sponsor, so he's even going to give you an extra bunch of gold. So it's a pretty decent deal. But Marineko is the stone master, so... Again, it, it really depends the point in time when you're at, when you're desperate looking either for a stone or to upgrade the ones you currently have. Now, when, when you're not in an event, when there's no flash anything and you want to still make gold, what has been advised a lot is to go into story mode and to the very first one. Uh, why is this? Is because a lot of people do not want to level up. Because when you're going to go in PvP, it's going to try to match you with people of the same level as you. And I'm not talking about player level or ability level. It's going to be your rank. And a lot of people don't want to rank. I personally don't care so much about the rank. That's why I've, I've gone all the way up over 100. I, I personally don't find that it's PvP is that valuable. So I'm, I, I need to, to fix my team specifically for it. On PvE, I'm doing very well. And I'm, I'm eventually just going to finish Hell just to get that swirly. But it's, it's pretty decent. The, the PvP experience can be frustrating as certain things are going to be nerfed. And in my case, that's healing who, men, who enters my entire team a joke in PvP. While in PvE, it's extremely strong. So you want to do 1-1. One, one. Uh, to finish the gold now i'm going to go to a different unit there's a lot of different ways to find gold and if the one i said is not in your list that is completely fine uh, of course i'm going to point out again there's pvp well I'm, i think i forgot to talk about it so whenever you win one of these pvp matches uh, i'm going to do a random one again proving that the sadness of the limitations of a team of course, what you can do was a very good method is you can keep refreshing the list until you see a bunch of teams you can beat, ideally four of them, because after two wins, you get a bonus amount of gold and GP on the win, which is extremely interesting because for literally doing nothing, you're going to gain more. So on top of it, those matches are going to be faster and you have a higher chance of winning. So it's going to take a few seconds. Just do them on automatic. It's, it's, it's not really worth wasting time on. In the worst case scenario, you're going to lose. But if you were able to select your team correctly, it's going to do it right. When you want to do this more professionally, you can look at the enemy team, check their stones, check exactly what strategy they're using, move your players accordingly, looking at elemental resistances. I am not really doing that currently. I'm, I'm just having fun. So... Later on, when I'm going to be doing this, the, the player versus player more competitively, I'll, I'll look at it. So again, as maybe you've noticed, there's there are two legendaries in my front line. It, it works very well. They're not they're not going to win. And a lot of players, more they advance, more legendaries they're going to have. So you're going to have to build up your defense. And legendaries are, are possible to get for free. So again, it's not a pay to win wall. It's a grind to win, but not pay to win. And yes, ping does help out. I'm not going to lie, but it's not the true source. So as you see, I got 3,300 gold and 1 GP for doing this. So this is one of the best ways to find gold. Now that we've finished talking about gold, I'm going to talk to you about GP. Because you love the idea of choosing your own card. I do, you do, everybody does. Now GP can be obtained by selling cards. So you're going to want to be able to get cards that are 3 stars and above. They need to be player cards. 
and they can be special cards. Those are the conditions, or you're not going to get anything. You're not going to get any GP when selling them. It's just a rule. I know it's annoying. We've all wished we could just throw everything we own and left with 100 GP, and it's a zero, and we're frustrated. So if you want to just make a small amount, what's very popular is to go in Coliseum. Uh, the higher you go up, the more GP it's actually going to give you. Um, as you see, it uses BP, who's a different type of strength, who recharges at a different rate. So on average, it's going to take two hours for a person to max it back out. And late game, it's going to take you around three hours to fully refill it because the max amount will go up as you level up. Now, a thing that a lot of people haven't realized that is especially important in early game is that when you can't win the Coliseum of Despair anymore, and you will hit that point, everyone hits it. In my case, it's at round 35. I'll always try to at least hit your highest rank as there is a reward weekly that is going to give you some crystals and dimension stones. Uh, currently, I'm I'm at uh, the six to ten percent, but I'm, I'm I'm working up my way slowly, slowly. Every week, I try to go one up. I've I've been pretty progressive. But let's say you hit your limit. What are you gonna do? Just wait for the new day to to happen, and then finally be able to press the reset button. You can press it now, but it's gonna propose you to pay thirty crystals, which is not a good deal. Never buy it. Please don't do that. It's it's not worth it. But what you can do to still get a bit of GP, it's not going to be as interesting. You can go to Coliseum of Trials. Again, th this is a, a bunch of small missions. Try to clear them. But even if you've cleared them, there's one that is impossible to fail in automatic. It's match 1-2. You're going to say, why do we care? First of all, doing any later matches is only going to give you 1 GP if you've already cleared it the first time. So whatever one you're making, unless you're in the 5s, Makes no difference. And if you're in the fives, knowing the amount of conditions, you're not autoing this. It's very clear. So this one's only condition is win before 20 minutes and when shooting one, two, three shots. So it's it's ridiculously easy. You just start. You can throw any player, ideally a friend player, to get a bit of friendship points. But you can really do what you want. It, it, it honestly doesn't matter in this match what you're doing. All you need is basically... A level 20 midline and a level 20 front line, that's all you're ever going to need. They're weak, and it's made at the beginning for players to have a chance to try this mode and see if they want to do the more advanced challenge. So again, like I said, you just auto it. Again, I'm, I'm saying auto because this is a game mode where you're going to want to read every condition very freely. But not this one. So again, pass, Vanchi shoots, it's over. Again, those are two legendaries, but if you don't have legendaries, it's still going to work that easily. And like that, you got one GP who a lot of people don't get because they say, oh, I've reached my limit. I'm coming back to this tomorrow. It takes just a few seconds and you're going to be able to get that extra GP. So that's how you get GP. And again, as I told you, a lot of people like to farm the match 1-1 in story mode. So the 1-1 is always going to be farmed because... In the drop list, it doesn't drop stones. It only drops player, and there's a three-star player. So if you ever get something above a two-star, it's automatically going to be a player, and it's going to give you GP. So the thing is that the amount of cards is something that may highly vary depending on your setup. As I said earlier, Peril will increase the chance of getting a bonus card. But there's a second type of bonus card you can get, and that's what we call the Clover card. So when you look at the picture of any player you've got, you're going to see a little bit under their element, a number of clover. And a clover is going to allow you to get additional rewards. So, for example, were you to have a 99 clover, and ideally you need to choose this player as your ace for it to really work. The best player for this is always going to be Elizabeth. And when you hit 99 with her, yes, I know I'm not at 99, but I'm slowly getting there. She's going to give you an extra card. Now, for a lot of you who have this great belief that taking two stars, making them 99, having a full 99 team is a way of life, it is not. The base star level of a player is what matters. You may special train them, you may do what you want, but nothing's going to beat a 5 star who's native 5 star with a 99. And even if you level her up to becoming a 6 star, it means nothing. Of course, the dream for grinding would be a full 99 legend team. Sadly, no person is crazy enough to try to pull that one off.
because the way you get you get some extra clovers is by giving a second time the card to itself, meaning a dupe or what we call a leader. Of course, both of them are on average very rare when you go above four star. So you're not going to be able to just throw them around. And then you're going to make a formation and make it an ace. This is one of my formations. When you do this, on average, your backline doesn't matter. So you can try to just level random players or try to train them or do anything you want, do chains. It's very popular when you're grinding 1-1 one -one to also complete chains of your players. What I define as chains is when you go in story, this is a list of players. If you fulfill the condition for type of possessing at any point in time, meaning you've already sold some, all five of these, you can complete a chain. It's going to give you the conditions underneath. Sadly, for this one, I cannot do it because it says which player I'm missing. On average, it's winning 10 to 20 matches with the player, but the amount of stars is going to affect the amount of matches you need to win. Now, a, a big misconception that a lot of players have had is you don't need every player in the chain to get a chain bonus. All you need is one player. I'm just putting that out there because I've seen a lot of people tell me, oh, there's five players, but I only own four. I'm never going to get the chain. You only need one. It's something very simple. And chaining is the only way you can fart dimension stones. Because when you complete all four chains of a player, it's going to give you an amount of dimension stone. The thing is that this amount is going to be based on their base level. So let's say that you're going to do a two star and you complete all its chains, you're getting two dimension stones. A three star four, a four star six, a five star eight, and a six star ten. The thing is, the lower the star, the easier the chains. So you're going to notice that you're going to finish all the chains of the two stars first. Except for one or two of them who felt that one of their chains required a legendary, who, on average, you're basically never going to own. Well, you're going to own some after a certain point, but it's going to take time. Oh, and if you look at my screen, you will also see that there seems to be a bug, as this is supposed to have text and not just be a white blob. Now, for crystals, we've, we've explained the ways the achievements, and there's also going to be some consecutive achievements and end-of-season achievements. There's one for getting 300 GP, who's pretty decent, and very often in events, there's going to be some sort of crystal reward at one point, it will, on average, require a decent amount of grinding, and you're not going to be so happy about it. But it's usually pretty doable after a while. It's made just for not everyone to finish off all the crystals, because that is technically where they make their money. So they're going to give you some, but they're going to make you play for it. So if you're not paying, at least you're playing the game. That's kind of the idea behind it. So lately, we're having an operation where every 24 hours, we get rewards for completing a small mission. And um, if you look on the fourth day for getting 30,000 gold, we got an extra 20 crystal. This game is very often under an event. It's extremely rare you don't have one. So you need to check constantly the event tab and slowly read the details. I know it's annoying, but you need to do it. And the last way is going to be in PvP in something called Galaxy Super League. You're not going to win them every round. You're only going to win them when you rank up in the league. The thing is that ranking up is extremely hard because on average, it's going to require you to have an AAA to pass the first rank and then it's going to require higher amounts of team ability or extremely hard. Even with my team with four legendaries, I'm having a pretty tough time getting to diamond and that's saying nothing about the following leagues. But, again, as you notice, it gives Crystal and Dimension Stone. And at the very end of the season, you're going to get some leaders who are used to special train. Uh, not special train. What am I saying? Uh, to count as duplicates toward characters. And will give them also the same amount of Clover as the leader. So, I hope this answered all the main questions that you can have about the game. Uh, if you have any other question, uh, just notice me and I'll try to make a video on this. But... I think this was something that needed to be shown in video as a lot of people through time have had the exact same questions. And I know that it can be extremely overwhelming when you're just reading a five page article saying you should do this, you should do that. And have the time, you don't even know what the hell we're talking about. So thank you very much. And I hope you'll enjoy this.